Welcome back everyone to a freezing cold January day. Welcome back to another Motorflix episode. Today, we've got a good one for you. We've got a Python Green Cayman GTS 4 litre. Now potentially, this is probably the best little sports car that money can buy at the moment. It's got the four litre engine directly derived from the GT4. Few little software tweaks and it revs 200 RPM less than the other car, but it's got same gearbox, same engine. It's got not as much suspension trickery. It's got narrower front tires, narrower rear tires, but this car, as an everyday usable little sports car that you could show it some fantastic little B-roads, I don't think there's much out there that will beat this. I can't wait to have a go in it. I've only driven it up and down the M4, picked it up from Reading yesterday. So today we're going to go out into the Cotswolds and we're going to uh, go and see what this little sports car is all about. I can't wait, it's going to be fantastic. Now, I know that everyone's probably going to say that I'm just another one of those fanboys that just loves a manual Porsche. And yeah. If I'm totally honest, I do. And I am one of those people. I love them. I think they're absolutely fantastic sports cars. 911s, or Caymans and Boxsters. All of those different things serve a purpose. So this one, we today, as I said in my little piece of camera, are in a Cayman GTS 4 litre. Porsche have answered the prayers of many, many, many people and they have created what is potentially the best B-road sports car on the market that money can buy. This car has just shy of 400 horsepower. It has 420 newton meters of torque, or 310 foot-pounds. <laughs> yeah, come on! This is, oh, honestly, it's such a, such a direct, planted, confidence-inspiring little sports car, and B-roads in this car are just absolutely fantastic. This is exactly what a sports car should be like. It's fun, it's playful. Obviously, mid-engine, it sounds fabulous. It sounds fantastic. The four-litre engine that revs to 8,000, well, just shy of 8,000 RPM. Good bit of twisting there. <laughs> yes, come on. It's basically exactly the same unit that you get in a Cayman GT4. Now, a Cayman GT4 is 10 grand more expensive than a base Cayman GTS 4 litre. So the Cayman GTS 4 litre is 64,000 pounds. This one, as tested with the Python green and a few other bits and bobs, it's got the fancy lights. It's got the Alcantara all over it, but not the steering wheel and the gear stick, so it might stand the test of time a little bit better. This being a press car, it's probably no bad thing. This car is 74,000 pounds, so it's got 10 grand's worth of extras, which is basically exactly what a base Cayman GT4 is, or Spider. It's just, it's a tonic to all of these ridiculously fast hypercars and supercars and stupid McLarens and Sabres and all of this, you know, the Bugattis that come out there, seven million pounds and all this kind of stuff that are just chasing enormous numbers. This car has 400 horsepower. That's not an enormous number in this day and age. It, but it's the perfect amount for the UK roads, for anyone to jump in and enjoy it. It's an absolute wonderful piece of kit. This car is on the steel brakes. I don't think you need ceramics on the GTS. I think if you were going to buy a GT4 and you were going to track it a lot and you were going to do you know, loads of track work in it, I think then yes, I think you would be clever to get the ceramics because they take a load more punishment and they don't, you know, they don't fade um, if you're going to be tracking it. This car feels to me like the perfect version of a road sports car. Yes, you could take it on track, but it's soft, it's quite supple. You can put the PASM into, into a stiffer mode down here, which I'm sure then makes it, you know, trackable. The pedals in a Porsche are just 
so in exactly the right place for heel and toe. The clutch is quite long. I've got short legs, so I couldn't probably get any further away from the steering wheel, but it's perfect for me. The steering wheel is nicely towards my chest. It's nice and low. It feels like you are in control of the front end of this car. The steering has loads of feedback, loads of feel, awful expression, but it does. It, you know, you feel what's going on at the front axle. Now, this car hasn't got the trickery of the GT4, which obviously borrows some parts from the GT3, its bigger brother. This hasn't got that, and it has slightly narrower front tires, slightly narrower rear tires, but you don't feel an enormous amount of difference. I've only driven in the new GT4 once and not for very long, so I haven't done a back-to-back -back test. I would love to do so. This car is on P0s, and I'm sure that the extra special Cup 2 tyres that the GT4 is on as well, you would notice a lot of difference. Again, if you are tracking it, this car doesn't necessarily lend itself to being tracked. It lends itself to the person that didn't want the pretty dreadful two litre and two and a half litre engine that was in the box to the Cayman and the S's of both of those, which don't get me wrong, and please don't take it that I'm you know, saying anything bad about those, because I'm not. They are very, very good cars. They're very good sports cars on UK roads, but I love the fact that, I mean, just listen to it. That's not even got sports exhaust on. Let's bang the sports exhaust on, knock it down into first. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. Just listen to it. I mean, that if that doesn't, you know, if that doesn't give you a chubby, then I don't know what will. That flat six behind you, oh, what an absolute masterpiece. It's honestly, it's, it's such a, it's such a rich noise that just fills you up and makes it, it's so exciting. So exciting. And the gearbox, this six-speed manual gearbox, it is a delight to use. It really is. Now, I have one criticism with this car, and it is a criticism that I know has been mentioned, and I am, it is not something that I would, that would stop me buying one. It is not something that detracts from the whole thing, but, the gear ratios in this car and in the GT4, because they share them, they're just a bit too long for real enjoyment of this manual six-speed gearbox. First and second, you get to use the whole of, and then that's sort of it on UK roads. But when you are not at 7,800 RPM, the car has plenty of low down grunt and low down torque so you can actually use the gearbox you don't have to you know thrash it you can ride the wave of torque and you know and use the gearbox now the gearbox is actually really lovely to use round town it's really lovely to use out like we are now out in the countryside we're at 3000 rpm in fourth and you can stir it beautifully and it's up into sixth and then down into fourth like it's a it's a lovely thing to just use and enjoy and to really enjoy that you're in a driver's car now i'm sure this with a music would be absolutely lovely as well but it's just not something i would even consider specking this manual gearbox is a peach and i think anyone that bought one of these would be immensely happy with it and proud to say that they own one. I think the 718 Boxster and the 718 you know, Cayman, all guys is, all look lovely. They're a lovely little sports car. Now, the only thing is that I would have wanted this to, because it has the four litre engine, I would have wanted it to look a little bit more like the GT4. Now the GT4, has the wings and the deep front splitter and the, all of the aero and all of that all over it. Now, I know you get that for your 10 grand extra and your, you know, and your tricked up suspension, etc. But I just think that this needs a little bit more. It needs a deeper front chin. It needs it's just something to make it stand 
over and above what this car is and how fantastic and fabulous it really, really is. But, you know, that is subjective. So, you know, you might want to be a little bit under the radar, and I'm not gonna lie to you, you probably wouldn't spec the Python green if you wanted to be under the radar. This is very, look at me, I'm in something sporty. I like it, I think it looks really cool. It's a lovely, rich, deep Porsche color. We're out onto another bit of great road. So, I mean, you, can, you don't have to rev it the whole way out. You can really enjoy the gearbox you know, not necessarily the whole way up it. So the fact that the gears are quite long, it doesn't necessarily matter all the time. And I imagine on a track, it would be absolutely fabulous. It's a proper, proper, proper sports car, and it's properly enjoyable. I use this expression again. It's a real tonic to all of these silly, high performance, very, 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 very fast cars. Now, obviously there is a place for those, but they just feel to me a little bit like a willy waving competition. Whereas this isn't so much of a willy waving competition. It's more of a, look at me, I love driving and I don't care what the car is that I'm driving. I just want to really enjoy myself. And I love that. I think that makes it just so <laughs> Come on, I mean this is, this is a proper car. This is a proper, proper, proper sports car. But it is manageable, it is fun. It is, oh God, I just, I can't, I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed it over these two days that I've had it. And thank you very much, Porsche. That Jaguar F-Type that I tested was the same money as this car. I mean, riddle me that. Come on, I know people have given me a load of stick for that video, but I was only being honest, and I'm being honest again. This is fantastic, this car. Honestly, I think genuinely, bang for your buck. You don't have to spec it like this, so 65 grand. Honestly, this is a really, really, really good car. If you like driving, and if you, are, you know, not even if you're quite good at it, just if you like doing it. I mean, it is fantastic. Go and try one and do us all a favor and keep this lovely four liter engine going because it is just magnificent and it sounds beautiful.